Hello, my name is Phil Price. I'm the priest in charge of the Draycott and Lamb Valley Benefice. And this is my sermon for the 18th of February, 2024. Uh, let's pray as we come to think on God's word. Lord God, we thank you so much for the gift of your word. As we come to reflect on it now, we pray that you may encourage us and draw us near to you. Amen. So our reading comes from Mark chapter 1, starting at verse 9. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptised by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. At once the Spirit sent him out into the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness for forty days, being tempted by Satan. He was with wild animals and angels attended him. After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. As you may know, or at least have worked out uh, from my attire, I am a Welsh rugby fan. Uh, but I live in a house uh, with three women who have no interest in rugby whatsoever and for the most part are quite baffled by my interest and passion. Uh, I do try very hard to enlighten them, uh, but with not much success, it must be said. A few days ago, I was having a conversation with Millie, my eldest daughter, about rugby and being a rugby fan, <coughs> so, which... I think will show you the challenge that I have in this regard. I should probably explain at this point that Millie is a child uh, who has quite a very literal uh, way of viewing the world. Can't remember exactly how the conversation started, uh, but I must have said something like, we almost won, uh, referring to the Wales-England game last weekend. Millie turned to me and said, why did you say we, Daddy? Well, I explained, I'm Welsh and that makes the Wales team my team, so it's we. But you're not actually on the team, Millie said. No, I said, I'm not a player, I'm a supporter. So you don't actually play in any of the matches? No. So what do you actually do to help the team? Well, I support. How do you support, she asks. Well, I, I watch, I say. Uh, and at this point, uh, Millie lost interest in the conversation and she just gave me a kind of withered, pitying look and went back to her book. They say, they say, don't they, out of the mouths of babes. Because she's quite right, isn't she? I can walk around with my Wales hoodie or a Wales rugby shirt and say things like, you know, 2005 was my favourite of our Grand Slams. Or actually, looking back at last week, we were robbed because England's second try was clearly from a forward pass. Uh, but actually none of those two things are in any way related to my contribution to the team, are they? I may well have bought a polo shirt that says Wales 2013 Six Nation Championship winners on it, but I don't have a winner's medal or a cap because the success of the Wales team that I might revel in has nothing to do with me really, any more than the failure of the Wales team is my fault. And yet, having been a Wales fan since 1994, I feel like they are my team. And I live and I breathe every minute of every match, even though rather than being on the pitch, I'm actually on a sofa with a beer in my hand. Their success feels like it's my success, and their pain feels like my pain. Which makes absolutely zero sense right, when you try to explain it to a 12-year-old girl who isn't interested in sport. But it sort of makes sense in my head. So what I'm about to say may make sense if you or have ever been a sports fan like me. Uh, there's a danger that maybe it will feel somewhat alien if you hate watching sport and feel no affinity with a sports team. But please do bear with me because I think this does say something into our passage. You see, our gospel reading is quite an interesting one. It's a really short one, but there's an awful lot in it. And the vast majority of what we find in our gospel reading is about Jesus. 
we learn a lot in our passage about who he is. So obviously we have the voice from heaven, which tells us that Jesus is God's son. It tells us that Jesus is loved by God. And it tells us that God is pleased with Jesus. So there's three things on the off we learn about Jesus from our passage. But there's so many other things as well. We see the Holy Spirit descending on him like a dove, which might sound like a pretty little image, but actually it's packed with symbolism and meaning here. And it's saying something really quite powerful. You see, the Jews were waiting for the Messiah. Messiah literally means anointed one. So the Jews were waiting for someone whom God would anoint. And you see, whilst humans anoint with oil, God anoints with the Holy Spirit. So this simple image of the Holy Spirit descending on Jesus like a dove is actually a really massive pointer saying, look, Jesus is the long awaited Messiah. We're also told that after Jesus was baptised, the Holy Spirit led him into the wilderness. So we see, we learn something else about Jesus, we learn that he is obedient. And then after 40 days in the wilderness, Jesus comes out and preaches that the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. What, <coughs> what does that mean? Well, that means the kingdom is directly related to Jesus himself. The king is present, so the kingdom is nearby. The kingdom of God is to draw near spatially in Jesus' person. So our reading tells us that Jesus is a king. It tells us he's the Messiah. It tells us he's the son of God. It tells us he's loved by God. It tells us he's obedient. And it tells us that God is pleased with him. There's an awful lot that can be extrapolated about Jesus from those seven short verses. But it does bug a question, doesn't it? So what? What does Jesus' identity have to do reading with us, with us reading about this 2,000 years later? Well, I think the answer lies right at the end of the passage. Repent and believe the good news. What is the good news that we are to believe? This may sound like a bit of a tangent, but bear with me. There's a reason uh, why I'm taking this tangent. Uh, I wonder if you know what a meme is. Uh, just in case you don't, uh, here's the online dictionary definition of a meme. It defines a meme as an image, video, piece of text, etc. Typically humorous in nature that's copied and spread rapidly by internet users, often with slight variations. Uh, that's a definition of a meme. meme. And there's hundreds of them. Uh, but I want to talk to you about one. Uh, it's quite a sweet one uh, that you might come across. And it's called the find someone who looks at you like meme. And in this meme, you have pictures of someone, um, often but not always someone famous, uh, looking at someone or something else with a really loving expression on their face. And it's accompanied by the text, find someone who looks at you like and then a description of the picture. So I'm going to pop some examples up um, on the screen now so you can see uh, what we're talking about. It's meant to be a sweet meme, showing people enjoying and appreciating things and encouraging other people to seek out someone who's going to make them feel special through the way they feel about them. It's a wee bit twee, uh, but it really does highlight the fact that actually I think all of us have a desire to be loved and to know that we are loved. And it plays on kind of seeing someone else's love or relationship and desiring to have that same level of affection shown to us. And I think our passage is a bit like that meme, in that what we see in Jesus' baptism is God the Father looking down on God the Son and loving him. You don't forget those words, you are my son whom I love, with you I am well pleased. And the good news of Christianity is that God looks down on us 
And he loves us just like he loves Jesus. Not because of anything we've done, but because of who Jesus is and what Jesus did. The good news of the Christian faith is that because of Jesus, when God looks at us, he doesn't see our failures, he doesn't see what we've got wrong, he doesn't see a trail of broken relationships and problems left behind us, he doesn't see our sin, he sees Jesus, he sees the son whom he loved and with whom he is well pleased. He sees the obedient son who went out into the wilderness for 40 days to be tempted. And whilst we may feel proud of making ourselves making it through Lent without chocolate or alcohol or whatever, Jesus went into the desert and went without everything. And that's what God sees when he sees us trying to do Lent. And that's really good news. And I think it's a really, really powerful antidote to a lot of the problems that we have gotten ourselves into as a society. One of the big problems that our society is struggling with right now it's the problem of identity. Who am I? How do we answer that question? Well, the good news of the Christian faith is that as St Paul puts it in Galatians, in Christ you are all children of God through faith. For all of you who were baptised into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female. For all of you are one in Christ. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. We don't need to worry about working out who we are, because the good news of Jesus is that because of him, we are children of God. Because of Jesus, when God looks at us, he can see blameless, good children whom he can be proud of. We've found someone who looks at us like God the Father looks at God the Son. In closing, I want to briefly return to my conversation with Millie about the Welsh rugby team, because she's right, I'm not a member of the Welsh rugby team. No matter how many replica shirts I buy, that won't change. I'll never take a conversion for Wales. Neither will I put my body on the line to stop England scoring a try against us. Not only do I lack the athletic ability for that, I'm not entirely sure I want to risk concussion for the sake of stopping another team scoring. <coughs> That's why I don't have any uh, Wales caps, but the players that I support do have Wales caps. I do enjoy it when Wales win, it makes me happy. As a supporter, I do share in their success to an extent. That's only really basking in someone else's glory and achievements. They aren't really mine. The Christian faith, on the other hand, is different because on the cross, Jesus literally hands his achievements over to me. I haven't done anything to earn God's favour and Jesus' reward any more than I've done anything to win a Grand Slam for Wales. But the Christian faith means that I don't simply bask in Jesus' reflective, reflected glory. Jesus shares his glory with me. It's as if I actually have a Wales cap, earned and gladly given, genuine and not bought off eBay. But I have a genuine, real, earned Wales cap, despite having never actually taken the field to earn it myself. That's what Jesus can give me. It's not what the Wales rugby team can give me. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you so much for your grace. Thank you that you offer us acceptance through Jesus. Thank you that when you look at us, you see Jesus and you are well pleased. Please help us to live lives that reflect that. Live lives that are the lives of people who can be secure in our identity as your children. Status one through Jesus on the cross. Amen. <laughs>